Good morning, everybody. Today is 111 and it is May 26, 2023. It is 1144 AM. Let's get started. Okay, so important topic for today. Let me adjust my glasses here. Push them a little too close to my face. So yesterday at the end of my walk and talk, literally for about the last 10 to 15 minutes, I talked about something that I think I should have talked about in the beginning. And that is a copyright claim. Now you guys know that I have touched a little bit on the subject about copyright strikes and how you can only have three. That's after you receive a warning and then bye bye channel. Okay, pretty much. As a matter of fact, I don't even think that you would get a warning first. If you receive a copyright strike, I think you just get that. I'm not too sure. Okay, but what I do know is that they also have a copyright claim. And I don't remember reading anything about this until it happened. So I'm gonna tell you guys about how it happened and about what I did to remove it. Okay, so I have made a short, and like I said, I've been going back and forth between having music on my shorts and videos and not having music. Now, of course, you wanna pick a song that you like, that you think is popular, that a lot of other people like, and you just want to kind of like make your video and your short creative. Well, the thing about it is, is the problem is that there is a bigger issue with that than I thought. Okay, so with the whole copyright thing itself, just because you give credit to the artist, so you say the name of the artist and the name of the song in the description box, and maybe you even mention it in your video, that still does not give you rights to use that song. Okay, so you would still, for some songs, have to have an agreement that you can use it on your video or your short. And if you don't, that can create a copyright claim or a copyright strike. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about the copyright claim. And so I guess how it happened. So I made a short and I used a song. Now, I'm not even sure if I say the song right now, if when I upload, it's going to put a copyright claim. I would think it wouldn't because I'm just telling you about it and it's not gonna be in the background. Okay, so hopefully I'm right. Um, and you know what, I think I should be okay because of the video, like I said, I uploaded yesterday. I did talk about it at the end and I think I did say the song. So the name of the song is Everybody Loves the Sunshine. It's by Roy Ayers. Well, there is a uh, company, of course, that has rights to that. And even if you put the correct licensing, which I did, it just didn't save. Okay, like I said, I know that anything that's 59 seconds or less, when I upload, is going to automatically be turned into a short. So, like I said, I might have, let's say, two to five minutes to go make changes. The very first thing I do is I go to the studio and I change the licensing. And I make sure that I only do that at home because I have access to the computer and I don't remember how to change licensing in the studio app itself if I'm not by a computer or a laptop. Okay, so I went over, I changed the licensing, you guys, it didn't save. No, it saved with standard licensing. So when the short uploaded, it said on the content page where that short was, uh, copyright as a restriction. And I'm like, what is it talking about? I put the Creative Commons attribution, right, for the licensing. So I went and looked and it it didn't say that, it said standard, and it also wouldn't let me change it. So I said, okay, I think I did the timing almost just right. And so I'm gonna go, I'm going to erase the short, and then I'm going to upload it again. And I'm going to make sure 
that it is safe. And I did. So I changed the licensing. It was fine. But it still put a copyright claim on the short. And on the content page, it still said copyright. Now when you go to your YouTube Studio app, it will say copyright claim on that short. Okay, I don't know about a video, but I know for a short. So I was like, oh my gosh. The first place I went to was my dashboard. You know, if anything happens, if you get a warning or if you get a strike, it shows on your dashboard and it stays on there. Okay, unless you appeal it, or in this case, unless you dispute it, then it will show. So I didn't see anything there. So I went back to the content page and I noticed where it said restrictions and where it said copyright, that there was like an arrow or something like that. So I thought, okay, click on it. And I did. And then a box came up, a small box, and it said that there was a copyright claim, but it did not affect the short. And so it said to uh, click on see details, like if I wanted more details, right? So it says see details and boom, you click on that. Then a bigger window opens up and it tells you the same thing, except for it'll tell you something like there's a copyright claim. It'll tell you if it affects your channel and that's it. It doesn't tell you anything else, except for if you click on the three buttons on the right. Well, not buttons, but the uh, three dots, okay, on the right. Now, when you click on that, you have options. You can either A, replace the song, B, mute the song, or C, file a dispute. And I thought about it, and I said, okay, well, it said it didn't affect my short. Now it's saying that it's not going to affect my channel. Maybe I'll leave it because I like it. And I thought, wait a second. With it being a copyright claim, would I be able to monetize this short? What if it gets a lot of views? The content is mine. The shoes in the short are mine. I paid for them. That was not a paid promotion short at all. And I'm not sponsored, period, at all. So... If it makes a lot of views and it gets ads put before or after it, and if I apply for the short ad revenue sharing, if I get approved, since there's a copyright claim, I'm assuming that I can't make any money from this short. And so I started researching and I was right. Okay, now I'm not monetized as you guys know, but if I was, the owner can decide if A, they're going to share the revenue that's earned from the ads, or B, if they want 100% of the profit. Mm -hmm. And they can also decide if the content has to be removed. And they can file to say whether or not they want it to be considered a copyright strike. Okay, which at that point, you would go to the copyright section on your YouTube studio and you would take the steps to make changes, I guess. I don't know if you have the same options when it's a strike, but I thought, oh no, no. The owner has way too much control and it's their content, yes, but I put the name of the artist, I put the name of the song, the licensing says Creative Commons Attribution, so what else was I supposed to do? I did not know that still, some songs, you still have to have permission from the owner. Okay, it doesn't matter if you give them credit, thinking that that's going to work and save you any more problems. So, first I decided, okay, let's just leave it how it is. Don't dispute it. Your short's not affected. Your channel's not affected. And it would be nice if you were monetized so you could see if monetization is going to be made with the owner and you. Okay, but I think even if I was monetized, that it would not tell me that. Okay, so I would be thinking, oh yeah, because that's the thing. With the copyright claim, I also read that actually you cannot monetize it, but the owner can. And like I said, then they decide do they want to share their uh, the profit from it. 
or do they want to keep the profit, all of it, for themselves 100%? Okay, and then they can even, I believe they can even use, like, either a clip of, I would say, whatever part the song was on, which for mine, it was a short, so it was a whole, like, 25 seconds. So they have, like, all this stuff that they can do. But like I said, I believe a copyright claim completely knocks you out of the water, like I said, unless they decide they want to share the uh, profit, you know, the revenue. So I said, okay. Well, as I kept reading, I thought, um, the views are going up. Now, it didn't climb like some of my other shorts. No. Where it was literally at a thousand views, like within a couple of hours, or by the end of the day. No. But it was going up slowly but surely, and I said, I want to be able to try to monetize this if it receives enough views. Because I believe I also read that if you get approved to be monetized, I believe you have to go in per video or per, uh, per short and request to monetize each individual video or short. Okay, so it doesn't just monetize, like I believe your whole channel once you get approved, so far as I know. To my understanding, that's the way it works. Okay, so you can have videos and shorts on your account that you don't ask to have monetized. Once you're approved to be overall just monetized, period, right? Okay, so, and like I said, the shorts ads, revenue sharing, I'm still reading on that. So, I said, all right, then go ahead and replace it, the music, because the only other option you have is to do what you did the first time. Even though you know you put the correct licensing and you know you click save, even though you now have the correct licensee on their stage and this time it actually did save, then you need to fix this. It didn't affect you, but you can't make any money from this and you're putting in a really big effort. So I told myself, your only other option would be, would be to erase the short and to upload it without the song. Okay, literally to try and remove it off. And I said, well, let's see what happens if you click replace. Okay, so I'm going to explain one more time how you get to where you have the option to replace the music and where does it take you. Okay, so like I said, you go to your studio, you go to content, okay, you go to that short where it is, okay, and if you're on the computer or on a laptop, your shorts and your videos are all in the same place, right? It's not like the app. Okay, where it says restrictions, where it shows copyright, there should be an arrow. You click on the arrow. There will be an option to click on see details. It should be in blue. Click on that. Big, huge window, like I said, pops up. On the right side, there are three dots. Click on those three dots. Click replace music. It will then take you to the editor page and it will show you what you normally would see. So of course, what you're replacing is the audio. So you click on audio. Now, be careful because some of the music that YouTube provides to you is attributions, which means copywritten, yes. Okay, and as you know, like I said, there are um, restrictions and policies that follow with that. So the very first thing you want to make sure that you do, whether you stay on the first tab, which I believe says music, is that when you click search, the first thing you want to do, if you do not want to face any copyright issues, because remember, at this point, it's just a copyright claim. It's not a strike. Okay, so you're not trying to get yourself a strike, so I'm pretty sure if you don't do this correctly, you can end up with a strike. You're not trying to do that. Okay, so first thing you wanna do when you click search, go down to the bottom of that box that pops up, click no attributions. Okay, that means that you can use that song in your video or your short, even if you want it to be monetized with no issues. Okay, now, of course, they'll have to approve the monetization of that actual video or short, right? But you can get to that later. 
The first thing you're trying to do is to get the copyright claim off of, in this case, your shorts. Okay, so no attributions is the very first thing you want to have in the search box. And then if you want to click on the search box again and search by either musician or you can search, or we'll say artist. So you search by artist, you can search by mood, you know, and it'll come up happy, angry, like it has a whole list of moods. Okay, whatever you want to do for a search after that, that's fine. Because everything that pops up should be no attribution music, no copyright issues. Okay, you don't even have to have the licensing say uh, Creative Commons attribution. You can leave it as standard licensing. Okay, now if you go into the start section, if you have some songs that you put as a star as your favorite, okay, and I believe there are only will be about maybe say 10 maybe on the list, okay? Because your other option is to go to the audio library. But keep in mind, if you already have about 10 or 11 on your favorites list, on the starred list, it's called starred, if you say, you know what, I don't see it. I know I said it as a favorite that I started, right? I clicked start. I'm going to go to the audio library because I remember the name of the artist. I remember the name of the song. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to go see it. What you're going to see is you did star it. But if you don't want to have to go through the hassle of downloading it, because now think about it. If you download it, you're going to have to, yes, erase the short, fix it, add that, and re-upload it. So if you don't want to have to do that, say, okay, I'm going to go back over here into the editor where I was, and it's not on the start list. I'm going to go back to that music list. I'm going to type in the name. I'm going to make sure it doesn't say CC over there because you'll see the YouTube logo. And you're either going to see nothing over it or you're going to see two C's over, which means copyright. But if you have to search that, it's no attribution, so you should not see the two C's. That's how you know the difference. Okay, and then you search for the song and then you can add it. Now, I don't know how many songs you can add in YouTube Studio, I'm not sure. Okay, but for my short, I added three. Okay, and you get to listen to it before you save it, as you know if you've done this in YouTube Studio, to see if you like it. Okay, you can change when one song starts, when one song stops. You cannot add the same song twice, just in case you're wondering. All right, so now you've made your changes. You've added as many songs as you want to your shorts, or if it's just one, you've listened to it. And also, key thing, the song that has the copyright claim is gonna be there, okay? And it's going to have a little red symbol that basically tells you it's the copyright, or a uh, claim, yeah, song, right? And it's going to tell you if you hover over this. Okay, just in case you don't hover over this and you don't see this message, I'm going to tell you. However many songs you are able to add, you have to cover up the whole amount of time that you used the song. Okay, I got lucky that it was just a short and it was just 25 seconds. Okay, so it said you have to make sure it covers completely. Now... What happened when I added the song was this. There was about two to three seconds that it didn't cover, okay? And so I said, I want to make sure this is covered completely. I wanted the song to cover my whole short anyway when I did it. And because it didn't, it just kind of faded out, but it was perfect. So I didn't mind that when I originally made the short. But I'm going to make sure the entire 25 seconds is covered. Because now that'll cover the copyright claim song. And now I'll have music played all the way to the end of the short. Okay. Now, I believe the, let's see, if you use one song. Okay, I believe the box is great, just like the song above it. Okay. 
Now, once it covers the whole song you're trying to cover up, I believe it turns blue. All right? Now, if you use more than one song, one of them will still kind of show blue. But what you're looking at is the time you have the song on there. You click save, and it's going to tell you that it's going to possibly take a couple of hours. And in the meantime, your original short is going to stay the way it is. So that copyright claim song is going to stay there until YouTube actually does the edit that you saved. Okay, what well, you'll also see in a message, I believe in the same box, is this. That once it's saved, your changes, it's going to take away your copyright claim and it should tell you that it's going to automatically change the licensing. It's gonna say standard when you go look. Okay, and what I've noticed is that the box is gonna be gray. Okay, so, so far as I know, you won't be able to change the licensing on there. But at this point, you don't want to. You want it to say standard. Let the changes stay. Okay? Now, if you decide you do all of this and you go ahead, you go play it, right? And you're like, uh, you know what? I don't like, like how I did it. I had two songs and I thought they sounded cool overlapped, but when you hear them playing, once it gets up to like HD quality or even before, I just don't like it. I still like what I picked. What do you do? Okay, 20 minutes and 46 seconds. We'll make sure I have time to tell you guys this. Because your next question is probably, can you change it again? The song. Yes, like without having to erase it short and doing it yourself in whatever uh, app or whatever you use to edit. Yes, but you have to follow the same steps. Okay, keep in mind the changes that you made are there. Once you undo those changes, it's back to having the copyright claim song on there. Okay, so you have to pick something and save it. Okay, so let's go back through the steps because now you're going back in because you don't like the music that you picked from the YouTube studio. There was another song maybe that you heard, another two or three songs, you thought, you know what, maybe if I put this song first, that song, or maybe if those two songs were overlapped, or maybe like how I did, I had one song start, I had one song as like a filler, like right in the middle, to kind of transition into the other song. And then I did it like that. So I had three total when I went back, because I did. I heard it and I was like, I don't like it. I don't like that I overlapped them and then eventually I just let the last one play. It didn't sound right, it didn't mix well. Okay, so you go back to the content page. Yes. You go back to where it shows restrictions. And let me think, you know what? Let me think about that. No, 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 no. Because it's gonna say none, restrictions none. No. Scratch that. Okay, so you do go back to the content page. Then you go to, in this case, like I said, for me, it was a short. And then you click on, let's see. I believe the little pencil. That's a little edit icon, right? And then those options come up where you see editor. Click on editor. And then that window pops up. And then where it says audio, at the end of that bar, whatever you call it, section, it's gonna say edit in blue. So you click edit. Then you go in, make your changes. But again, keep in mind, you have to cover up the whole copyright claim song. It's still there, it's just covered up. Okay, and you'll find out. Once you start removing the songs that you put on there from the YouTube studio, if you were to go over to the right side where it shows like, your video or your shorts, if you click play, it's gonna play how you originally made it from the beginning before you made any changes. 
because you removed those songs from the studio. Okay, so now, unless you just click back and then it'll say, oh, any changes that you made are gonna be discarded and you click okay or yes or whatever, then you'll just have it back to how it is. But remember, the whole purpose of you going back into the editor and changing the audio is that you didn't like the songs you picked from the studio. Okay, so you're either gonna decide one of two things. I'm gonna have to like it enough because I don't feel like changing it and I just can't get the mix right or I'm gonna go through the trouble of replacing my edit. And I'm going to, yes, I'm gonna go through the trouble of, if I'm still in the music tab, click search, go to no attributions. So from the top, from the beginning, I don't have to worry about copyright issues. Okay, the licensing has already been changed to standard. I need it to stay that way. I need there to be no restrictions. So I have no choice but to sit here and actually re-edit this again the way I want it. And that's what I had to do. Okay, so I had two songs that I liked and I said overlapping them halfway did not work. Okay, that's what I did. I said I need a filler. Something where it transitions. It kind of sounds like it was still kind of the same song, but they went into a different beat on the song or it literally switched songs, but the transition is smooth. I need it to be smooth. Okay, so the beats are gonna kinda have to match and be similar, or it's gonna have to sound like uh, maybe some drums played, like a little teeny quick solo. Uh, the flute something is going to have to be in the middle because overlapping them, just it doesn't sound right. And I've decided the song I was gonna use in the beginning, just that one song, I decided that I didn't like it enough to only have that song. So that's what I did. I put one song at the beginning where I had it, and then I picked a second song in the middle. I added that, and then I picked the last song that I picked before, and I put it at the end, and I had the overlap of the song in the middle. So song number one, overlaps song number two just a little. Song number two overlapped song number three just a little, just for that transition. Then I click save and then it tells you this could take up to a couple of hours and until it changes, then everyone is going to hear how it is. Okay, not the original, not the copyright claim song, they're going to hear the first change that you make. And give it some time, because this time it's gonna take longer than what it took the first time. Even if it's just a short, even if it's only 10 to 15 seconds. Because now they're having to basically make those changes and the songs are coming from the studio. Okay, and I guess you could say, in a sense, now it's overlapping your change plus the copyright claim song is still there. Okay, so to be able to cover up something like that, it's gonna take more time. Okay, and if you're wondering, well, were you able to like, let's say erase the copyright claim song? No, I right clicked on it to see what options I had and erasing it was not an option. Um, the first change I made, removing those songs, I believe, just took it back to just the copyright claim song. And even then, I still wasn't able to like right click it or anything like that to erase it. So I had to cover it up again and then wait for the changes to be made. Okay, so even if the first change I made still wasn't overlapped, it still had to overlap overlap the copyright claim song. Okay, now, I had a thought. This is an idea, you can try it if you want. I can't promise you that this is going to work. Okay, so uh, we're at 28 minutes and 18 seconds, and you're like, okay, what's your thought? What's your other idea? My other idea is starting from the beginning. Okay, you haven't replaced the song, you haven't muted it, 
And like I said, in the beginning, just like when you thought this was not a strike, and it didn't affect my short, it didn't affect my channel. My channel's fine, I'm gonna leave it. No, 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 you know what, no. Um, I want to go ahead and be able to monetize it if everything goes okay and if it gets approved. Okay, so now, like I said, you're at that decision where you're like, I think I do wanna change it. I don't wanna just mute it. If you just mute it, first and foremost, do I know if that will take away the copyright claim? I'm not sure. It may, it may not. Because if you think about it, think about it, it's muted so they can't hear it anymore, right? So there's a possibility muting the song, okay, keeping it up there may take away the copyright claim. So under restrictions on the content page, it'll say none and the licensing will say standard. Okay, obviously you still have the option to erase the whole entire short. Like I said, this might apply to a video too, so you have the option to just go ahead and delete it forever. And edit it from your end and then put it back on there. Just remember, if you use another song, you might run into the same issue. Hopefully this time it won't be a copyright strike. Okay. Um, can you mute it and then still click replace? I don't know. Okay, I, I don't know. I can't tell you guys that because I didn't I didn't try it. Okay, so like I said, you're at the content page, you see restriction says copyright, you click on the arrow, the box comes up, you go to the three dots, right? You click those three dots on the right and you select mute. Can you go up and now select replace, which is, gives you the option like above it? Is that even still there, visible? I don't even know. If it is, I'm assuming you just might be able to do that. Okay, so you're probably thinking, why would I do that? Let's just say you go to the studio and you can't decide which song you like the most. You know you found something under no attributions, right? But you don't know just yet what you want to put. Okay, so I'll mute it for now and then I'll replace it later. You might, like I said, be able to do that. That might be the whole purpose. Then when you make a decision, okay, I know for sure, it, especially if it's one song, this is a specific song I'm gonna use that I saw in the YouTube studio. This song kind of stood out to me the most, you know? And I only want one. And that'll be easy for me to just cover up the whole song with just one, because you can, you can slide it and stretch it as long as you want to, okay? For the full length of the shorts, right? Okay, so that might be the reason why you do that. Now, the other thing is, whether you mute and that's it, if it does change the copyright claim and change the licensing to standard, whether you mute and replace later, or whether you say, no, I'm gonna replace right now, no matter what you do, the whole purpose of keeping the short up, or like I said, if this applies to a video as well, is the views. Okay, so that's the only thing I have not addressed is do you keep the views? And I found out, yes, you do, if you're not monetized. Okay, if you're monetized, I don't know what happens to your views. Because if you think about it, the copyright claim made it to where you can't monetize that short. The owner can, but you can't. And so the thing about it is, let's just say You've also applied for the short ads revenue sharing and they approved you. So now you're in that pool of if money is made from those ads that are placed before or after short that you receive some of the money. The musician, the owner, producer, whomever, if you have music, they receive their portion as well. And YouTube receives their portion, well Google receives their portion as well. Okay, but I thought about it and I was like, Number one, what happens to my views? I'm not monetized. And I thought, oh, nothing. They stayed. But what if I was monetized? The first, I don't know, let's say three, four hundred views, because an ad got placed, let's say around view 150. Does that portion get dippied up between, let's say, me and the 
owner if they say they're going to share? Or do they get all of that revenue from, like I said, view one up to view 150? And then where I made the changes at, is it marked? And then from there on, then it's just me and you two making the profit? How does that work? What happens? Does the views go to zero if you're monetized when you do this? I don't know. Okay, so keep in mind, it could be either or. Okay, so hopefully, if the views do go to zero, you didn't have a whole bunch of views, but even if you did, you weren't gonna get any of the money anyway. So it kind of gives you a fresh start. I have no idea what happens. Okay, so um, hopefully it's a copyright claim just from the beginning. Hopefully it's not a copyright strike. Okay, and if you're monetized, hopefully you can make the change that I told you, and then it'll change your restriction to none, it'll change your licensing to standard, and then hopefully you get to keep your views. If you don't, like I said, you weren't gonna make any money off of those views anyway, because they had a copyright claim on them, okay? Or, I don't know, you might only have the option to just delete the content even though it was just a copyright claim. Who knows, those options to replace, to mute or dispute might not even be there. Okay, so we're 34 minutes, actually 35 minutes. Now, so far as the dispute, I click on it just to see what will happen. There are three options. Either I own the rights, which of course if you say that you're gonna prove it, or I gave credit. And when you hover over either of these three boxes, any of them, there's gonna be another paragraph. Read it, read it, because they give you a message before you decide to click the dispute button, okay? And if you see the one in the middle that says I own the rights, when you hover over it, I believe it's gonna tell you that you have to prove it. And I don't even think it tells you how. You won't know that, I think, until you do a dispute. Okay, and I'm assuming at that point you can upload something. Okay, there's a box also that says, I gave credit to the owner. When you hover over that box, it's going to tell you that if you give credit in the video, or if you get credit in the description, and it's talking about the description box, that still doesn't give you rights to use copyright material. Okay, in this case it was a song. So it's just letting you know that, that if you go ahead and dispute it for that reason, if you click that box, then you still might lose the dispute. Okay, so I thought not worth it once I found that out. I was like, well, they made it seem like that you would be fine as long as you followed those steps put Creative Commons attribution for licensing and uh, before it actually posts onto YouTube, right? Before it uploads all the way and you thought you were fine and you didn't even know. And then you have no way of knowing which songs have that much of a copyright to where they can copyright claim or even strike, right? So without even a list, and I know the list would be long, without having that information, honestly, Unless you can prove that you made the music, your only other option to stay safe is to either A, use the music from the YouTube studio in the editor section, or to B, to go through one of those um, apps or websites where I think you pay money, and then like you like receive licensing or something like that. Okay, and in that box that pops up when you click those three dots, I believe when you hover over the I gave credit to the owner and that paragraph comes up, either there or when you go look into the copyright claim, like if you just search it, YouTube, usually it'll take you to the information on YouTube, right? And then when you read, it does list a company that you can use where I guess you pay for licensing and then you're fine. But you would still in your dispute have to say, I have licensing through this company. But at least it gives you an idea of the company that you can use. 
And it's in blue so you can click on it. So there you can probably go and find out what do you pay, how does it work, things like that. Okay, so if you do enough research, you're not left hanging. It's just that you don't find all of this out until after you receive the copyright claim. So I am bringing the information to you. You know what I say so that you don't have to go search all over creation for this information. Okay, so whatever part of this is useful to you, I hope that it helps. Um, if you kind of understood some of what I said and there's some parts that you're like, okay, I don't quite understand, um, just my advice, you don't have to take it. Watch that part of my video again, okay? And then what I do, like, if I am a visual person, which I am, some of it I don't just remember from like reading or hearing something, I actually have to see it. So what I would do is I will play the person's video, I will open up another window, go to the area of where they told me to go, and something on my lip. And then, uh, <laughs> there goes my allergies too. I knew it, but I made it, you guys. I'm so close to 40 minutes. But um, anyway, and then I would, uh, I'm up here sniffling now. I would actually just go through because you may be watching this video with copyright claim and wondering uh, what to do. And then you search on YouTube or on Google and you come across my video. Okay, so if this helps you to be looking at what I'm telling you, then just open up another YouTube page and go in and then you'll see all the options I'm telling you about. Okay, so I really, really hope that this helps you guys because I was like happy that it didn't affect my short and it didn't affect my channel. But the first thing I thought, especially since, like I said, it only says copyright on the content page underneath restrictions. It says copyright claim on the YouTube Studio app. And little small writing for, in my case, the short, okay? And when I saw the word claim, I was already researching it some, but I was like, that means they own all the rights. And the thing is so crazy because it's like, wait a second, they own all the rights, even though the content is mine and all I used was their song. Okay, so like I said, I funded everything else. Those are my shoes I paid for. Those are my clothes I'm wearing. I'm not sponsored. And there is something that you can pick, okay, for if you click dispute that says I'm not monetized. Or it might even mention sponsor, but then if you hover over that box, I think it still tells you it still didn't give you rights to use that copyright material. Okay, so I believe that's also an option you can choose for dispute. But read the paragraph before you click on it. Okay, before you fill out the dispute. I do remember it did say that. Okay, so I thought that was filmed in my house. That was filmed in my courtyard, whatever you want to call it. Okay, on my property. Like, I'm not, we're not renting here. We're paying a mortgage. Okay, so between us and the bank, that's it. There are no other, uh, other owners, right? So when I really started thinking about it, I was like, and it wasn't the most creative, best thing in the world, I know, but it was still something I came up with and I put time and energy and effort into. And I have no money rights at all. If it can be monetized, they can monetize it, and I can't. That's what made me go ahead and replace the music. Because, like I said, I found out, oh, I get to keep the views. Good thing I wasn't monetized because I might have lost the views too. So, yeah, I know I'm over, but... Um, I really, I know I keep saying this, but I really do hope that this helps you. You do have options. You can remove the claim, but that's how you do it. All right, so we're at 42 minutes, 22 seconds, 2.81 for distance, 195 for calories. And I'm going to push stop here. And I'm going to say my goodbyes now because I know I've kept you guys a little bit longer than what I usually do. Okay, it's not very often that I go too much past the 40 minutes. All right, so... Um, I really, like I said, hope that you guys get some type of clarification out of what just happened. You know, you received it and what do you do? What are your options? I mean, I know it tells you, but 
until you hear, okay, it's been verified by a person that went through this, that this is what happened. Okay, now, last thing, am I concerned? I just thought about this. Am I concerned? Because all it did was cover up the song and I never muted it. Will it like undo the changes that I made? I made two changes, right? Now, the second change is on there. Okay. And it's for my DKNY, um, Aliana and Abby shoes. The all black is the Aliana and the neon yellow is the Abby. Okay. That's the short I'm talking about. And, um, I am curious if I should have muted first, if I had the option and then replaced the music on top of that. So if something happened, the original song would be muted. I don't know you guys. I don't know if I should do that because I am pretty sure I can, but I don't think I can get the timing out. I would have to go to the song and there's a box. Okay, you have that slider, but there is a box where you can change like where you want the songs to start and type in the numbers. So unless I have those exact numbers and, and can write them down before I remove them and add them, then what do I do? And also, I just thought about that. Okay, because the copyright claim is no longer there, I don't have the option to mute unless I remove the music from the YouTube studio and click save. But that's going to make the claim come back. And at that point, will it be a strike? So I'm going to leave it where it is. Yes, I hope you guys watched all the way to the end of this. And I'm going to put somewhere in the description box that there's an important message at the end. Okay. Um, I personally am just going to not touch it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to just trust that it's going to stay the way it is and the claim will stay gone. But I do think I, if I could have, I should have muted it first and then replaced the music. So I would say fingers crossed, but I heard that that's bad luck. So I don't know. I'm not all that superstitious, but it's enough to where I'm not about to cross my fingers. I'll just say, hopefully everything stays the way it is. And later on, if I do get monetized, I can uh, apply to monetize that specific short. All right. So you guys, I'm going to get out of here and I will see you guys later. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe. Bye.